from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Several U.S. cities now making safety plans following former President Trump's calls for his supporters to protest his arrest, which he says could come as soon as today, though his spokesman says he has not received any guidance on that just yet. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with the latest. And four pretty simple words this morning, mist, drizzle, fog, and cool. That sums it up across South Texas. In some places, the fog, fog is pretty thick. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 21st. Thanks for joining us. Yes, all of the above, but you know what? It's cool, but not cold. A little warmer today. That's true. Uh, it is slowly creeping up temperature wise. And Mike was yesterday starting to talk about a slow warming trend throughout the week. Yes, we will be warmer today. We will be warmer tomorrow. Yesterday afternoon, those climbs, that was only you know mid 50s. And that was a chilly afternoon. It really and, was. And then this morning, it's it's that damp cool. You know, so grab a jacket with all the uh, the fog, the mist out there. This is the camera out there by the airport right now. And you can see the roads are definitely damp. Visibility quarter mile. There are no advisories as of yesterday. Yet, but obviously we're going to keep track of that half mile visibility port SA two and a half at Stinson and then a lot of fog heading out 90 in toward Hondo you valley got some fog in the hill country not as much down to the southeast this morning and we do also have not only mist but a couple of light little showers they may be uh, just kind of sprinkles if you will perhaps just a, a brief little shower not much out there a few of them around Gonzales and then in and around the metropolitan area coming in from Atascosa County right there on the south side of town, just moving right across 1604 on the south side. And then these just few showers that are just enough to make the roads damp. So take it easy as you head out this morning, not only with the damp roads, but also obviously with the fog 55 degrees right now. When you have this much humidity, when you have all the clouds around here, you don't get much of a difference in temperatures all around the area and the humidity has definitely come up. And so we've got upper 90s, 100% humidity in most areas and a couple of ingredients. Obviously, they're feeding some of that fog. Oak is on the moderate side. Mold, hackberry are low. The updated count comes out later on this morning. Getting ready to head out to work and school. Yeah, grab a jacket because it is that sort of dampish, cool mist, fog, a couple of sprinkly showers out there. And then later on this afternoon, we will hit 70. Little bit of sunshine thrown in. I wouldn't count on a lot of it, but at least we'll see some. And still, there'll be a couple of little light showers or sprinkle here and there. I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow, except add to that by about 10 degrees, getting up uh, in the 80s. Same thing Thursday. Then we've got another front moving on through. Will it be like the one late last week? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New details in a shooting we first told you about is late breaking news on the night beat at 10. This was the scene a little after 10 o'clock last night on Commerce Street on the east side of town. Police tell us it all started as an argument between neighbors over a parking space. Officers say one neighbor pulled out a knife. The other had a gun. At one point, shots were fired. One person was hit twice in the leg. The shooter was arrested. And right now we are working to learn the names of a man, his wife and their daughter who were all found dead inside their northeast side apartment. Officers tell us that the man shot and killed them before turning the gun on himself. The discovery was made yesterday a little before noon at the Winding Creek Apartments on Northwest Military Highway. Now this is near Wurzbach Parkway. Investigators are trying to figure out if there was a history of domestic violence. Now to the courtroom in the case of a man convicted of firing shots at a wall that killed an innocent woman in a nearby apartment. After taking a plea deal yesterday, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Amir Muhammad Powell is sentenced on capital murder charges for the death of 30 year old Shawana Robinson. That shooting happened back in 2019. Police say Powell became upset at a woman inside his apartment when he started shooting, aiming at a wall. At least one bullet went through the walls and into Robinson's apartment. She was shot in the stomach and died at a hospital. Her family left the courtroom unhappy with the outcome. I feel like we did not get any justice for what this man did to my sister. Um, 20 years is not enough. He took my sister's life. His life should be taken as well. My mom was an amazing, beautiful, she was intelligent. She was a caring, loving, strong woman. Family says Robinson was working towards getting her real estate license at the time of her untimely death. Another big story we're following for you this morning. Cities across the U.S. now bracing for some unrest. 
Over the weekend, former President Donald Trump claimed without evidence that he could be arrested as soon as today and called on supporters to protest. Now, Trump is at the center of a Manhattan grand jury criminal investigation into hush money payments to an adult film star. An indictment would make Trump the first former president to face criminal charges. ABC's Justin Finch has the story. Police in New York City setting up barricades and preparing for former President Donald Trump's possible indictment. Trump saying over the weekend, without evidence, that he would be arrested today and urging supporters to, quote, protest and take our nation back. So far, Trump's spokesman has said he has not been notified about an imminent arrest and no comment yet from Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. But Bragg telling his staff, we do not tolerate attempts to intimidate our office or threaten the rule of law in New York. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? Trump initially denied knowing about the hush money that a Manhattan grand jury is now investigating, but later said he did. That $130,000 paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels during the 2016 campaign to cover up their relationship. Prosecutors now investigating if Trump falsified documents and violated election laws. It's a typical Donald J. Trump play out of the playbook. Figure out how you're going to muddy the water as best as you possibly can. Denigrate Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, on MSNBC. Cohen has admitted to helping to arrange that Daniels payment at Trump's direction and pleaded guilty to campaign finance violations. Michael Cohen, he's totally unreliable. Well, he went to jail and now he's on the revenge tour. Trump ally Robert Costello testifying before the grand jury that Trump committed no crime. And still no word on if a Trump indictment is coming, but ABC News has learned that the Secret Service and the NYPD held a call Monday to review possible logistics and security just in case. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 437, 56 degrees. And how are you feeling as you roll out of bed in the morning? If the answer is still tired, well, then you're going to want to keep it right here. Still to come, some simple things you can do to get a great night's rest. Plus, a update on a little girl hurt during that tree collapse at the San Antonio Zoo and this, what the city is doing to make sure everyone stays safe at parks around town. A quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Those roads are wet, especially there at their I-10 at the Y, but it doesn't look like we have any problems as of yet. And Mike says we might see a peak of sun today. We're hopeful for that. We shall see. We've got an update on his forecast as he waves me off like a plane trying to land in a storm on an aircraft carrier. Nope. Go around, Mark Austin. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 440. We have some good news following that scary tree collapse at the San Antonio Zoo last week. The little girl who was hurt in that accident is improving. She is currently listed in fair condition in the hospital. Seven people were hurt when a massive branch broke off one of the zoo's trees. Following that incident at our zoo, the city of San Antonio is now inspecting all the trees in Brackenridge Park. The city's forester tells us they are not responsible for the zoo's tree assessments or maintenance, but they say that they're already taking steps to ensure these trees on this side are taken care of. And here's what they had to say. We currently are pruning trees up over here by, uh, by the river. Uh, and we also are removing a few dead trees. I don't have the number right uh, off the top of my head, but we're looking somewhere in the ballpark of five or six trees that, that are completely dead and have been identified as a hazard. Holinsky says when they are looking for an unhealthy tree, they're looking for discoloration in the canopy. That's the highest part of the tree. Also, leaves falling at a time of year when they shouldn't. Also heaving in the roots. Teams have been in the parks every day to make sure anything unsafe is reported. A couple years ago, my sister was flying in to visit, and as she was landing in San, she got off the plane. She's like, I forgot how many trees you guys have around yeah. here. She went to high school here, but she forgot. So um, a lot of work ahead for yes. uh, arborists and, and tree experts all around our area. Yes, we have, we have a lot. 442, 56 degrees. And after the break, new details into a Colorado dentist arrested for poisoning and killing his wife. That is next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the dentist accused of poisoning his wife. My heart is broken for those children. They've lost a mother. 
and my heart goes out to them and the staff. I, I just can't believe it. Overnight, one of his former patients speaking to GMA. When I heard the story again, it was not indicative of his personality. That was not the Dr. Craig that I know. Right now, I just want everything for the community is to get behind this staff, to get behind this community and let justice play it out. Police calling Angela Craig's death heinous, complex, and calculated, alleging James purchased arsenic and cyanide and secretly poisoned her protein shakes. And we'll have much more on this developing investigation coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is something we treasure here on GMSA. We're talking about sleep, and if the switch to daylight saving time is still messing with your sleep, you're not alone. Following your size, Marilyn Moritz shares how to get a better night's rest and the products that can help. If only you could buy a better night's sleep. There are a lot of products, but where do you start? You want a supportive mattress and a pillow. Those are a must. Uh, we've also found that where you sleep, so your sleep environment, plays a big role in the quality of your sleep. Your environment plays a big part in your sleep quality. Some people need silence, but others like background noise to snooze by. If you want to try a white noise machine, Consumer Reports found this magic stream is inexpensive, easy to use, and has a bunch of sounds. If you have a fan, you can reap some of the same benefits of a white noise machine without having to spend the extra money. Another sleep splurge, a mattress topper. Consumer Reports looked at softness and heat retention because some people sleep hot. This linen spa topper was the coolest they tested, but... Even the comfiest topper can't completely fix a mattress that needs to be replaced. So just keep that in mind before you spend any money. Need a mattress? CR found some good ones that cost less than a thousand bucks, like this inner spring from Denver Mattress. If you prefer firmer, they like this sleep on latex. Both support back and side sleepers of different sizes. I know this sounds chilly, but studies show that setting your thermostat at 65 degrees at night makes for the ideal sleep temperature. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Let's look out there with TransGuy, looking over to I-10 at De Zavala. You can see the wet roadway right there. And uh, yeah, it's kind of been foggy and wet this morning. That's a mess cool. out there. Yeah, don't forget, use those uh, low beams uh, this morning. And then as the sun comes up, don't think you're out of the woods yet. Keep your headlights on during yeah. any foggy or rainy weather. Hey, big day at the Austin house. I noticed a, a nest with eggs in it oh. in the lamp of my uh, patio ceiling fan and mom was nowhere in sight. So oh, okay. yesterday was the day I was like, if I don't see her, the nest is gonna go out to the curb with the trash. Yesterday I got home and mom was, mom like, was like, I'm here, I, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> don't she, touch my house. And she hadn't been around for two years, so I guess COVID restrictions or something, but <laughs> but she's back, she's back. Nice. You're yeah. good. Yeah. That'll be fun, you need to take pictures and yeah. I know. send them in. Okay. So. In time for I, spring. I just don't want to scare her off. She just got back. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do it from a distance. Okay. So. Anyway, <laughs> and then you can have a KSAT Connect picture, like yeah. one of these beautiful shots right there. I this was that. this was yesterday, and yeah, the clouds really hung in there tough, and you know it was expected to stay on the cool side, but uh, compared to temperature did get up to 56. It was 59 on Sunday. Difference being, obviously, we had a lot of sunshine on Sunday, and today this picture will not be getting much better. We're going to keep there may be a peak or two of sunshine out there later on this afternoon, but we're still going to have some of these little misty, sprinkly showers out. So this is what's being picked up on radar and kind of a wider view. It's almost hard to, to see anything, but as we zoom in a bit, there are these few little light showers just sort of scattered about here and there, uh, not really amounting to too much of anything except to make the roads kind of slippery. And as you can see here in town, we've got some of them that are coming in right there on the uh, southeast side, uh, kind of stretching over toward Lackland, over toward SeaWorld, Leon Valley. You're getting some of these showers as well. A few of them up here in and around the airport over toward Windcrest, sliding up in toward Hollywood Park up by Leon Springs, a couple of those, and then even a few more that are up in toward Canyon Lake going up into the, uh, the Hill Country. So again, not much. It's not going to amount to maybe a couple of hundredths of an inch at best, but um, it's just that nuisance kind of stuff. On top of that, we've got some of the fog, quarter mile visibility at the airport. No 
uh, advisories posted as of yet. Half mile up the road, burning stage, so going up 10, going out 90 in all directions, except along the coastal plain. There's not anything as far as fog right now, but it's all uh, kind of confined off to the west. Eagle Pass is down to one mile visibility right now. As I mentioned off the top, very consistent temperatures, and with that very high humidity, because the moist air actually draws, it conducts heat away from your body. That's why it feels kind of chilly on a morning like this, and these dew points are only going to continue to go up. And compared to this time yesterday, dew points are up a good 15, almost 20 degrees, and then it will get more humid throughout the day today as well as tomorrow. So things don't really change throughout the course of the morning. 20% chance for a little mist or sprinkle, a uh, light shower, however you want to describe it. We will make it up into the low to mid 60s today at noon and a couple of peaks of sunshine. I'm not banking on a whole lot of it, but we will get up to 70. Still might have a couple of sprinkles out there. Here's the uh, computer model for the rest of today, and it just shows what we're talking about talking about not much just those few little spots here and there of some sprinkles then we're going to do it all over again tomorrow as well as on Thursday morning but then look what happens on Thursday at, into Friday front moves through here that's going to drop the humidity different than last week though we're not going to get a big blast of cold air coming on in here also it's almost like deja vu to last week. We do have the severe threat, and this is going to be late, late Thursday into early Friday morning with some uh, potentially strong storms. So the forecast today goes like this. 65 at noon, still a couple of sprinkles around here. This fog is going to be kind of tough to get rid of this morning. These low clouds around here. Some sunshine, 70 for a high temperature today. Again, a light shower, sprinkles, however you want to describe it like that. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Thursday to start. These kind of murky, messy mornings. Then that front moves on through here, and we do have the chance for showers and thunderstorms. That's going to be overnight into Friday morning. Then we're going to clear out. It's not going to be cold like last weekend. As a matter of fact, we're going to be on the above normal side, but with lower humidity for the first part of the weekend. So cool, pleasant mornings, warm afternoons, plenty of sunshine, and then a little bit cooler to start off next week. Yeah, look at that weekend. Yeah, it worked out nicely. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. So hopefully we get some decent rain Thursday without sure. the strong stuff. Without yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 452, 56 degrees. And just ahead, we are talking about who's taking over for Tyra Banks on Dancing with the Stars and what it means for the competition. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, three, seven, three, Fireball three. Daily four numbers, five, three, one, seven, Fireball eight. Cash 5, 20, 24, 25, 31, 35. And your text is two step, 2, 10, 17, 33. Bonus ball, 28. And your Powerball numbers, 1, 27, 32, 47, 67, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Looks like the jackpot is at 96 million right now. The Ted Lasso team taking the show's message of mental health awareness to the White House. Star and show co-creator Jason Sudeikis among the cast who visited with President Joe Biden to promote mental health and well-being. And then they took the message to the press briefing room. You know, we encourage everyone, and, and it's a big theme of the show, is like to check in with your, you know, your neighbor, your co-worker, your friends, your family, uh, and, and ask how they're doing. And, and listen, sincerely. The second episode of season three of Ted Lasso debuts tomorrow. Last week, we found out Tyra Banks was leaving as host of Dancing with the Stars after three seasons. She had replaced longtime host Tom Bergeron, and now we know who will replace Banks, former dancer and judge Julianne Huff. Huff won the Mirabal Trophy twice and was a judge on the show for several seasons. Huff will co-host alongside Alfonso Ribeiro. A social media milestone for Selena Gomez. She's now the first woman with more than 400 million followers on Instagram. She posted that she wished she could hug all 400 million. Two other people over the 400 million mark, soccer stars Cristiano Ronaldo with 562 million and Lionel Messi with 442 million. And a couple of stars turning 61 today, comedian and actress Rosie O'Donnell and Ferris Bueller star Matthew Broderick. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I watched uh, Jason Tadekas at the podium, and he was nervous from the get-go. Right? But it was cool that the character that plays Trent Krim yeah. from The Independent asked him the first question oh, okay. from the audience, just like in the series. Wow. Pretty think, cool. Yeah. yeah. He hey. was actually there, Trent Krim. I think uh, he was very, very humble he, about of, it. Of course. Yeah. That's Ted Lasso. <laughs> Without Ted Lasso, I mean, the humility would be gone. 457, <laughs> 56 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, part two of our investigation into the failed Balling for Uvalde World Weekend, what we're learning about the reported history of dishonesty. And checking Trans Guide, it's messy out there, folks, even messier than yesterday morning. There's 10 of days of Allah. Stevens here. We'll talk to him coming up. 
Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now at 5, a look at the new Uvalde School District Police Chief, plus part 2 of our KSET Investigate series. It may not get you tomorrow or the next day you do it, but somewhere down the line, it's going to get you. The line we missed at the top, he said, do you believe in karma? Because I do. Things not adding up for the man behind the failed balling for Uvalde World Weekend. Lee Waldman investigates trying to get to the bottom of this story. And here at home, let's look out there with live cam. Can't see much. It's pretty foggy out there and cool 56 degrees. Good morning, everybody. First full day of spring 2023. It is Tuesday, the 21st. Thanks for joining us. It uh, doesn't feel like it right now, but things should warm up soon. Yeah, that trend continues and we've got a fantastic weekend. But in the meantime, there are a couple different things Mike wants to talk about. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, what you see is what you get for this morning as well as most of the uh, rest of the day. And that's all of the uh, mist and fog out there. And temperatures were actually above what the normal low is right now. But again, it's that sort of dampish cool with 100% humidity because the air temperature and that bottom number, the dew point, are exactly the same. And that, along with some other factors, why we have some of that fog out there. Yesterday, we only made it to the mid to upper 50s. Today, we get up to 70. Still not quite up to par. And we're going to have a lot of clouds around today. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens. Oak is still just on the moderate side. Mold and hackberry are both low. All right, step outside this morning and you're going to run into some fog around here. We don't have any advisories uh, issued, anything like that as of yet, but um, visibility, well, I actually went up a little bit there at the airport, half mile. It was quarter mile, quarter mile at New Braunfels, and then you go out to I-10 into the hill country, 90 as well as, well, Pretty much this is centered around the metropolitan area and going out to the west. Eagle Pass has dropped down now to just three quarters of a mile visibility, but it's pretty good down here along the coastal plain. Also, we do have some of these light showers around here. It's a lot of mist and drizzle. And then this is the stuff that is visible on radar, detectable by radar. And as you can see, this one spot right in here, and this is from, let me just uh, stop the uh, loop right now, uh, from Windcrest all the way in through the airport, heading up in toward Hollywood Park. And then we do have more on the uh, southwest side of town near Palo Alto College, going down 35. And again, it's not really amounting to too awfully much around here. Uh, we'll take anything we can get, a little bit of lawn winding, a couple of more of those showers down there around Poteet and then over toward Castroville. We do have better rain chances though later on in the week. Now, as far as the uh, rest of the morning, Again, what you see is what you get. Temperatures are going to be right around mid 50s, give or take mist fog. It is going to be on the cool side and then later on this afternoon again 70 for a high temperature with a shower, a couple little sprinkles here and there. Kind of breezy, not overly breezy. Same thing starting off the next few mornings. We will get warmer each and every day, and then we'll talk about the next cold front moving on through here. Will it be like the one last week? Yes and no. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Oh, one of those yeah. mornings on the road. Anything out there yet? Uh, not yet, Mike. And uh, thankfully, we are seeing some light traffic. But Mark mentioned this earlier. If you are driving out, make sure to use those low beams. If you use those high beams, it creates a uh, more difficult drive for you, causes a lot of glare and makes it hard to see, especially when we have some of that fog out there and the roads are a little bit wet. You can see there, 281 at Grayson. Perfect example, even there at State Highway 151. Very difficult to see the roads, but thankfully, we're not seeing any issues reported by TxDOT, at least just yet. The morning started off this way earlier. Check out our friends at TransGuide wiping the lens for us there at Tenet Hebner. Pretty much a gray screen there, but let's take you to the map. Again, the morning started off quiet yesterday, but we had plenty of issues that plagued the roadways for a few hours. We're starting the morning off quiet again. Thankfully, no problems to report, but still plenty of construction. You have to watch out for those crews, especially with some of the fog in the area. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but right now let's get to some of those travel times. 37 northbound, if you're heading in from Pleasanton, take your time. It's still 29 minutes at this hour. US 90 eastbound. If you're traveling in from Castroville, should take you about 30 minutes to the Alamo City. And that arrival from Lytle should be within about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. Let's get it back here on Transguide where you can see some of the roads are a little bit more clear there, but definitely damp or wet at 410 at Perrin Vital. Traffic is moving pretty steady through the area for now, but we'll keep a close eye on things. And as always, make sure you do the same, guys. Thank you, Stephen.
Two attempted abductions of young women on the city's southeast side. This happened in broad daylight over the weekend. Now San Antonio police need your eyes. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from the downtown area with a description of the vehicle and how those women got away. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie, and thankfully both of those women are safe and they were able to get away unharmed. But please look at your screen. This is what San Antonio police needs the, our community and help with identifying this suspect and vehicle in connection to those two separate attempted kidnappings. A man 18 to 25 years old, five foot nine weighing about 175 pounds with brown eyes and brown hair, driving this 2009-2010 maroon-colored Nissan Maran. Now, police say the suspect matches the description in both of these attacks. That first attack happened on Friday around noon on Wales and Killarney. The woman, the woman was in her 20s, for she fought for her life, and police say she was able to get away. The second incident happened not far from that area on the city's southeast side, outside Highlands High School. This time it was a 12-year-old girl walking with a group of other females. Police say she fought off the attacker on Saturday in broad daylight. The community is a big part of this investigation. I think somebody out there may know something as far as have, they may have seen that vehicle in their neighborhood before or they know somebody that lives next door with that vehicle uh, or that matches the description and driving that vehicle. Police are urging women to always be vigilant of their surroundings, avoid using headphones or distractions, and walking in group helps. So police also say if anyone approaches you and attempts to hurt that hurt or kidnap you, to scream and be ready to fight. Now police are asking the community if anyone knows any tips that can possibly lead to this suspect driving that maroon Nissan SUV to call the number on your screen, that number 210-207-2313. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A new Uvalde School District Police Chief has been named. Joshua Gutierrez is now officially in the position after being the interim chief. School board approved Gutierrez as the interim unanimously in November of last year. Here at KSAT, we did an exclusive interview with him back in December. There he is with the beard. A previous police chief was Pete Arredondo, who has been under intense scrutiny for the law enforcement handling of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary last year. Arredondo was eventually fired last August. And now to part two of our KSAT investigation following the failed Balling for Uvalde World Weekend. It was billed as a music festival to raise money for a recreational center in Uvalde. Now we're looking at the effort, uh, man behind those efforts, Nathan Cuomo. As Lee Wallman reports, Cuomo seems to have a pattern of dishonesty. Looking at Nathan Cuomo's social media pages, he's a proud former professional athlete. Nathan was a soccer player and he went on you know, to play pro soccer with the Houston Dynamo. But according to a statement from the Major League Soccer Organization, quote, Nathan did not play for the team. He might have joined us for a tryout or reserve team, but he did not sign a contract with the team, end quote. If he didn't play pro ball with the Dynamo, I feel deceived. I showed Pastor Richard Rodriguez this website that appears to be linked to his school, Christian Life Center Academy. It details the school's soccer program and lists Cuomo as the assistant coach. The page you showed me a while ago is not our page. That's not on our website as far as I know. But we've never had a soccer team. We don't have one now. A few days later, Rodriguez called and said their IT team did some digging and found the web page was created in 2013. And he's not sure who made it. While the website is still active, any mention of Cuomo has been removed. Cuomo's social media links to the Baller Foundation. According to Twitter, it's a 501c3 that uses sports to impact health and well-being of youth. We pulled IRS records. Baller Foundation earned its nonprofit status in 2017. It was revoked three years later. I wanted to talk with Cuomo about what we found, so we stopped by his office address in Houston. Nathan Cuomo, Baller Pulling public records, we stopped by Cuomo's last two known addresses. Nathan? Hi. Hi. Is there a Nathan Cuomo who lives here? No. Do you know if he used to live here? 
No luck, but we aren't the only ones looking for him. Nathan Baller, N-A-T-H-A. This man's real name is Nathan Baller. He lives in Minnesota. Years ago, Baller looked himself up on social media and found Nathan Cuomo's pages. Cuomo refers to himself by the last name Baller. Got a very strange call from a debt collector. Um, Don't have any debts that I'm aware of. The call came last April or May, but they were looking for the Nathan Baller associated with Baller Academy, Cuomo's organization. (laughs) Reginald Hardy had the same thing happen to him. His Houston-based nonprofit is also called the Baller Academy. Hardy has known Cuomo for years. When God took my mother at three, he gave me this sixth sense. The last time I spoke to him, I had stood up on me. Because their organizations share the same name, Hardy started hearing from debt collectors in October. He texted Cuomo about it. Got a disturbing letter in the mail last week that showed you owing over $14,000 to some sort of management company. Cuomo responded to Hardy's text message saying he didn't have a management company and didn't know what he was talking about. I sent Cuomo an email asking about Hardy's message, texted him about the balling for Uvalde World Weekend that never happened, and about the 4,500 tickets he claimed to have sold to it. No response. Do you believe in karma? Because I do. And it may not get you tomorrow or the next day you do, it, but somewhere down the line, it's going to get you. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And coming up tonight on the Night Beat, you're going to hear from several family members of the Robb Elementary victims. Now, Cuomo met with them shortly after the tragedy and promised to use the balling for Uvalde World Week and raise millions needed to build that rec center dedicated to their loved ones. That's tonight at 10. Look for more on that. 511, 57 degrees. And coming up later on, Good Morning America, the new warning about real estate scams after a retired teacher lost her down payment on her dream home. That's on GMA beginning at 7. The Golden State is starting off the week with another vicious blast of bad weather. We're tracking the latest from California. And here at home, not too bad, but let's look out there with live cam. A little foggy, a little cool, and the roads are wet. Look at that. The clouds are cutting the screen literally in half. Be careful out there. We're going to be checking in with Mike for the latest. 5.15, the West Coast getting walloped with another batch of rough weather. Forecasters say California is getting hit with another atmospheric river, which can be described as a fire hose that blasts saturated air from the tropics to elevated latitudes and sprays increased amounts of rain and snow. California has already experienced at least 11 of those atmospheric rivers this season, and this one is expected to last into tomorrow. Thousands of Californians were told to leave their homes and more than 25 million people in California, Nevada and Arizona are under alerts for strong winds. The San Bernardino Mountains could see up to four feet of snow by tomorrow. Still 515, 57 degrees. Google is giving some Pixel superfans early access to its conversational AI chatbot. So to come, we're going to take a closer look. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But firefighters entering a burning house will one day save time when lives are on the line. Visualizing a patient's most recent scan will help speed up decision-making in the ER. And while the woolly mammoth is still extinct, that doesn't mean students can't take field trips to visit them. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And Allegra Hives works from the inside to relieve itching and reduce hives for 24 hours. Dad, you all right? The road to college can be expensive. Luckily, Bank of America lets Dad switch his choice cashback category, so he earns more on gas. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. We're getting ready to cheer on the San Antonio Spurs after that big win against the Hawks the other night. They're hoping for another W as they get ready to play four games on the road. First up, they'll take on the Pelicans tonight in New Orleans. Tips off is set for 7 o'clock at Smoothie King Center, the most awesome named arena in the entire (laughs) NBA. I agree. Delicious. Go Spurs, go. Yes, go Spurs, go. (laughs) We glad we're you know we're glad to see some winning out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we know uh, folks are going to be heading out the door, and 
They have a lot to encounter out there, so just be careful. A lot of that fog is uh, really taking over our trans guide cameras. Let's get a quick look around town. You can see uh, really uh, folks are making their way on by there at 10 Advanced Jackson without any trouble, but most of these shots you're going to see fog or damp or wet roads out there. So I think Mike would uh, say, say it's safe to assume that's what you're going to encounter if you have to hit the roads in the next few minutes or so. Check out 35 at New Braunfels Avenue. As a friendly reminder, make sure that you use those low beams because if you turn on the high beams, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to see. It creates that glare for yourself and other drivers out there. In fact, on my way in along I-10, I saw a lot of folks turning on their high beams. That's a no-no. Make sure you use those low beams. Let's get a quick look here at what is also taking place along US 90. We have some guardrail replacement. That's been current for a little while now, and we're going to see a portion of it wrap up tomorrow, but it's still going to be overnight. 8.30 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when we're going to see a single eastbound main lane closure from West Military Drive to Old Highway 90. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet here in town. You're not seeing any slowdowns just yet, but the morning is still pretty young. So obviously folks are waking up, getting the day started, but they're going to have to be very careful out there. Check out US 90 at Meadow Creek. We do have a few more folks out there this early in the morning, but uh, it doesn't look like the fog is impacting traffic just yet, Mike. But uh, obviously people want to make sure that they give themselves plenty of time. Yeah, and you know, the biggest thing since fog isn't really, you know, just pea soup yet, but we've got all the mist drizzle, the sprinkles, little light showers out there. Here's the view out by the airport. And actually, this improved slightly from just about a half an hour ago. We do have some of these this light rain, and as you can see, everything is pretty much just sliding right up to the north. Very, very light showers. Um, not really much. I mean, this is only enough to make the roads kind of wet. A little bit of free lawn watering, but it's not going to amount to uh, too awfully much. We've got Got these showers that first band moved on through town and now this next one from Leon Valley over toward Castle Hills in toward Windcrest and then there's a little bit more where this came from so sort of these I don't even want to call it waves of light rain but just little uh, bits of the uh, you know the light little showers here and these are basically what we call streamer showers because all the moisture just continues to get pumped in here from the Gulf of Mexico and the atmosphere just kind of can't hold it anymore. And then on top of that, obviously we've got the fog. Visibility is half mile at the airport. Same thing, Port SA, two thirds at Randolph, down to a quarter mile at New Braunfels. That's some of the thickest fog uh, on the map as of right now. A lot of fog over there around Eagle Pass, not along the coastal plain. Usually that's where we see most of it. So everywhere west of the coastal plain, there's fog in some way, shape or another. Very consistent temperatures, mid 50s right now. We're actually a couple of degrees above the normal low, but it's that dampish cool with all that moisture out there and nothing is going to be changing over the next couple of hours. We'll have some sprinkles. We'll have uh, some mist at times. There's going to be some fog. We'll finally make it up into the low to mid 60s at noon. A peak or two of sunshine. I'm not banking on a lot, but there'll be a couple little spots here and there. We'll still have a few of these light sprinkly showers around here and there throughout the day. All right, we jump ahead to Thursday. We've got another front moving on through here and like last week, this is the similarity. It uh, does right now have the chance to produce some potentially strong or severe storms with high winds and hail. This is Storm Prediction Center already has that for portions of the hill country and further on out to the west. The the brunt of everything is going to be further to the north. Now this may change in the next couple of days as the Storm Prediction Center continues to assess the situation. The difference from last week's front is the fact that temperatures aren't really going anywhere ahead of will be at 83 and behind the front. We still stay in the 80s. Low temperatures will be cooler though because we're going to be getting rid of some of that humidity. So we will be down to uh, 50 on Saturday. That's the only reading on this graphic that is below normal. So it will be staying on the milder side, but we'll, like I said, get rid of some of the humidity as we go on in through the uh, Friday as well as most of the weekend. 65 at noon today. A couple of sprinkles, little misty showers out there here and there. Fog's going to be tough this morning and then even this afternoon. You can't rule out a couple of these showers kind of hanging around here. Peak or two of sunshine, 70 for a high temperature. So yes, it will be warmer than yesterday by almost 15 degrees and then add another 10 to that tomorrow and Thursday. Everything's just about the same. Morning fog, mist, a couple little sprinkles, a few showers here and there. There's the front that moves through. This is going to be late Thursday night, early Friday morning, so it looks like a wet commute on Friday and then 82 in behind that. And right now shaping up to be a good looking weekend, especially Saturday. We'll see some more humidity around here on Sunday and some pleasant mornings, warm afternoons. More after this.
I would like to have the Black Panther of every single diverse group that watches our films. Marvel Studios reportedly has lost a veteran executive and a major voice for representation. Victoria Alonso had been with Marvel since the start of the MCU and was an executive producer on every Marvel movie and series since 2012's The Avengers. Most recently, Alonso was Marvel's president for physical and post-production, visual effects and animation production. No word on the reasons for her departure. I almost never became a director. But he did. Oscar winner Jordan Peele has made Get Out, Us, and Nope, and now he's looking ahead. Universal, which released his first three films, has slated untitled fourth film directed by Jordan Peele for December 25th, 2024. I talked to Kat. She lives there now. Of course. Kat, actress. Your famous college roommate. You know you a joyride for joy. Here's a look at the raucous comedy Joyride, starring Oscar nominee Stephanie Hsu, who played Joy in Everything Everywhere All at Once. She's part of a quartet of Asian American friends on an eventful cross-country trip across China. The directorial debut of Crazy Rich Asians co-writer Adele Lim hits theaters July 7th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Let's look out there with live cam. We've been dealing with mist, drizzle, and a lot of fog for those drivers, but we're gonna check in with Mike to see how long it will last. And that's the low clouds just hanging right over the top of our, our camera view there. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 21st, first full day of spring. That's right. Speaking of spring, we're hoping we'll see a little bit of sunshine today. A little bit, that's the operative word. Okay. And <laughs> as far as spring showers, this is more nuisancey kind of stuff out there than anything really substantial. We do have a better chance for some rain later on in the week. We can talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But yeah, low clouds hanging around. And as you can see, the road is wet. This is 410 over there by the airport. And this is what what you see is what you get all morning long. Not much is going to be changing, if at all, and we'll still even keep a couple of these little sprinkly showers around even into uh, this afternoon. 57 degrees right now. Dew point temperature stands at 57, and when those numbers are the same, you have 100% humidity. That combined with some other factors, and you get a lot of fog around, and that's what the situation is this morning, although uh, visibility has improved by about a mile just in the past couple of uh, about 10 minutes out there at the airport, mile and a half visibility, still quarter mile at New Braunfels, some of the thickest fog, two thirds at Randolph, mile up around Kerrville. So anywhere from, well, about 281, 35, and then west of there is where so most of the fog is. There's not a lot down there along the, the coastal plain. We also have some of these light sprinkly showers. I mean, it's not much out there, but just, uh, just enough to make the roads kind of wet. And as you can see, just sort of these little waves of light showers move on through the area. And where there's not anything picked up on radar, it's going to be some of that mist, that very fine mist and drizzle. So it's going to stay this way all morning long. Just not a fun morning. Light rain jackets, the best thing you can take with these temperatures that are in the mid 50s. So it's kind of that dampish cool out there this morning. And mold is, uh, excuse me, oak is on the moderate side. Mold and hackberry are both low. And throughout the rest of today, most of the cloudy skies, maybe a peak or two of sunshine, not a lot. Couple of sprinkles, light little shower too. We'll be warmer than yesterday, so we'll make it into the 70s, 70 here in town to be exact. And then tomorrow, same thing, morning mist, fog, even warmer though, we make it to 80s. And same thing on Thursday. Now, Thursday night, we're gonna have a front move on through here, and that's gonna touch off some showers and thunderstorms, potentially some stronger storms, maybe severe into the early morning hours of Friday. But then after that, it's not gonna be colder like the last front was last week, but we're going to have some beautiful weather for Friday and Saturday, most of Sunday. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, Stephen, are mm. wet roads causing any problems out there yet? Uh, thankfully, Mike, we are in the clear, but you can see a lot of that fog that uh, you mentioned, and obviously the roads are a little bit damp out there. So that's really what drivers can expect this early in the morning. Let's get a wider look at Transguide. Check out 410 at Old Parasol. Really just uh, not a lot going on out there, but you do want to use caution if you are heading out the door in the next few minutes because obviously the roads are going to get busier minute by minute minute, but we really aren't seeing so much of an impact with the commute just yet. Let's take you to the map. You can see plenty of green out there and obviously a lot of construction, which we tend to get to a little bit later on in the newscast, as long as the roads are still quiet. But we know that things are going to get busy here in the next few minutes or so as the morning commute does get rolling. So give yourself plenty of time and remember, use those low beams if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes. Let's get to some travel times. If you're heading in from Bernie, that journey should take you about 24 minutes along I-10 eastbound. Heading in from Bulverde should be 
about 27 minutes along 281 southbound and about uh, 26 minutes along I-35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels. So no delays here just yet, but you can see again a lot of that fog taking over the transguide cameras there at 35 at FM 3009. We'll watch the roads closely and have those updates for you guys throughout the morning. Mark. Stephen, thank you. Harlandale Independent School District here in San Antonio has proposed a plan to consolidate at least five elementary schools after years of financial hardship and declining student enrollment. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from downtown with a recap of Monday's school board meeting and the schools involved in this proposed consolidation. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, last night that school board for Harlandale ISD met and there were members of the community community there that wanted to voice their concern and opinion. So go ahead and just take a listen. I implore you and ask you to not repurpose Moral Elementary. We put our students first every day and serve our current purpose just fine. We do not need to be repurposed. I would rather much have students and staff transfer to other campuses than to have employees be let go or for every and for every child to have a teacher in the classroom. So if approved, the plan would consolidate the Jewel Wetzel Center and four elementary schools, Columbia Heights, Morrill, Rayburn and Vestal. The district says all are operating at at least 50 percent capacity. Rayburn is closer to 60 percent capacity. If the proposal is approved, district officials say they will help facilitate the transition of all affected staff and students to other schools within the district. So the district stated that there has been a 19 percent decrease in resident elementary students over over the course of four years from 2018 to 2021 and that a significant loss is expected through 2026. Now, according to the district, low birth rates, declining market share and a lack of residential development are also seen as reasons for the decrease in student population. So parents, staff and community members are invited for one more opportunity to voice their concerns. There is a community town hall meeting happening tonight at Harlandale High School. It's happening in the auditorium. That meeting starts at 530 and will go until 7 p.m. Now, the school board for Hollandale ISD will meet and actually vote on the consolidation this, of this proposal on March 27th. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Now, we have told you about this yesterday morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office stepping up patrols at two local high schools. Now we are told the School Safety Task Force will patrol in and around Brennan and Southwest High Schools for the rest of the school year. The task force is made up of deputies from BCSO's gang mental health patrol and organized crime units. The sheriff this says that this goes back to Brennan students shooting death in February 2nd and other incidents with drugs or threats of gun violence near school campuses. Going into something like spring break, two days consecutive, you catch uh, young suspects with guns. A couple of weeks ago, we saw a shooting involving the death of a, of a Brennan High School student. This past weekend, we saw a shooting uh, involving a Southwest High School student. The Sheriff's Office will hold public forums in the coming days to share more information about the task force and what they hope to accomplish. Now to California, with more than 600,000 students in the nation's second largest school district, likely to spend the next three days home from school. That's because some of the people they see at school every day are planning to go on strike. The union representing Los Angeles Unified School District's cafeteria workers, bus drivers, custodians and other support workers plan to strike today through Thursday and the teachers union says it will honor that strike. CNN's Emily Schmidt takes a look at what's on the line. All right, we had no audio on that story, so we'll try to figure out what happened. And if we have time, we'll bring the story back. 539, 57 degrees. And coming up later on Good Morning America, learn from one mom of two who says she saved $1,000 a month on groceries. You're not going to want to miss how she does it. That's on GMA beginning at 7. Those kinds of stories always get a lot of attention. Yes. Plus, a mission in Mexico. Just head why Congressman Tony Gonzalez is sparking a new conversation. And grab that jacket again, although it's not as cold as it was yesterday. We're starting at 57 degrees and be careful with the fog out there. We're going to get the latest from Mike to see when we can expect to see some sun. In Mexico, a march and vigil was held for an Army private found dead at Fort Hood here in Texas. 
Military investigators say there was no foul play in 20-year-old Ana Basadua Ruiz's death last week. Her mother says Army officials told her her daughter died by suicide, a claim she is questioning. The League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, is demanding a Justice Department investigation into the death. The military says harassment allegations will be investigated. Starting a dialogue with Mexico's president. That's when one Texas lawmaker says a bipartisan group was able to accomplish this weekend. U.S. Representative Tony Gonzalez was among 12 U.S. lawmakers who met with President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. They talked about cybersecurity and border security. The congressman says it is just the beginning. Part of the homework, if you will, that I asked for was help finding these Americans that are missing. That's one. Two, is there some water disputes along the border? And I'd like to see Mexico release some water uh, in those areas that are important to our farmers. The congressman called the meeting, quote, an excellent conversation. Right now we're at 543, 57 degrees. It's giving a second chance to many here in the Alamo City. Just ahead, the housing is keeping some young people off the street. Plus, one teen's inspiring story of hope. And welcome back. It's 546. Finding safe, sober homes for young adults in recovery can be tough, but it's crucial to keep them off the street. That's why UT Health San Antonio is using a state grant to strengthen current housing facilities and create more in the future. A teenager tells our Courtney Friedman her powerful story of survival and recovery. Trauma started early in 18-year-old Brianna's life. I was adopted at a very early age, at eight. Um, supposedly I was sexually abused and as a little girl and taken away. She struggled with that even after being adopted into a safe home. She left that home and fell into some dangerous situations. I was pretty much on the verge of being homeless, ending up in ho motel rooms with men and just different, very unsafe places. Her parents found Deborah's house, a transitional home for women recovering from different addictions. The house, run by Corazon Ministries, is one of many transitional houses across San Antonio, but many are not certified at a national standard. That's where you Health San Antonio comes in. Their program called Be Well Texas was just awarded $3.4 million in state funding to strengthen current recovery housing for young adults age 18 to 25. They've completed treatment. They're coming out of jail. Um, we have one right now that was currently homeless at Haven for Hope um, that just moved in. The funding provided Deborah's House Director Ashley O'Leary extra training and certification. A level two means that we have a recovery support peer specialist on staff, which is me. We have counselors, we have mentors, we have classes we go to. Similar funding will cover training and administrative costs for more than 40 houses in San Antonio with a total of 400 40 beds. To know that other people care makes us care about ourselves. Brianna now has a job and is getting her GED, finally emerging from darkness to see how bright her future can be. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. I think 547. And as la last look at those trans guy cameras, I didn't see any problems, but drivers still have to deal with the fog. So let's check in yeah. with our Stephen Cavazos. Yes, uh, that is going to be right now the big issue out on the roadways. It's going to be the fog and obviously some of the mist and wet roads that we are taking a look at. Check out 64, uh, 1604, pardon me, at Kitty Hawk. You can see things are moving along without any trouble, but it's still pretty early. So we're going to see things pick up here in the next few minutes or so. Uh, but thankfully, no major issues are being reported in this area. Just make sure if you have to drive in the next few minutes, use those low beams. Let's Let's get you to the map. Now, a stall has been reported along 35 southbound near Cesar Travis Boulevard, not causing any issues for drivers, but uh, again, something to be on the lookout for. And if you have to head out in the next few minutes or so, make sure you check your vehicles as well. Let's give you a wide view of the metropolitan area. So aside from the fog and some of those wet roads out there, really the other headline will be road work. And let's talk about what's happening here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. This overhead sign work has been current for a little while now, but we're going to see that wrap up on Friday, March 31st. So we still have some ways to go. Plan your commute ahead of time because it's going to start during a very busy hour at 9 a.m. Should wrap around 4 in the afternoon. We'll see a full closure of the northbound main lanes from State Highway 151 to West Military Drive. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures there. I am waiting for an updated list from our friends over at TechStop, but we know those crews are active out on the roadway, so just make sure to give them plenty of room. And again, watch out for that fog out there. Yes, sir. People love behind the scenes. We have one of our interns in the studio right now. Lily, come say hi real quick. Come here real quick. You've seen, here, here, here. You've seen her on SA Live. You've seen her on SA Live. Hi, Lily. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're good. We just want you to 
Say hi to everybody. Yes. Hello, she, Cindy, perfect. Drew, <laughs> drew the short straw today. She's shadowing me this No. Oh. She's my favorite. Oh. She's having a good time. Your favorite. Yeah. Your, I learned so much. Uh oh, Steve is like your favorite. <laughs> That's what you told yes, me last week. <laughs> I'm her favorite, so. Oh. You can't Good, good well, answer. Well, thank you for getting up super early. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's no problem. I love you guys. Oh, thanks. Hearts. Best intern ever. Don't that, tell that to the other two. Yeah. <laughs> all right, when you head outside this morning, uh, what you see is what you get all morning long. And this is our camera down there at Brook City Base. Somewhere in there should be the, uh, the skyline of the city and we can't see nothing. And it's all this fog, the low clouds, the mist, the drizzle, the light showers. We are picking up some light showers on radar right now. Notice how everything just continues to work its way further up uh, from south to north. And it's not as though there's a lot out there. Um, you know, a decent little shower, say, from, oh, just about I-10 heading out in towards uh, Leon Valley, Leon Springs out there right going through the airport over toward Windcrest just moved through Alamo Heights just moved through downtown this will all continue to work its way up to the north we've got a couple of more little uh, stray showers here and there down to the uh, south and east and uh, yeah like I said this will continue on throughout most all of the morning and all the way into the afternoon because we've got all this moisture continuing to pump in here from the Gulf of Mexico I'm going to show you this in just a second also obviously we've got Fog out there, reduced visibility at New Braunfels. All of that has uh, improved a little bit, just gone from a quarter mile up to a half mile visibility. Two and a half out there in Uvalde, one mile visibility out in Eagle Pass. Nothing really along the coastal plain, and it's going to take a long time for all this to go away. Mid 50s right now, we've actually gone up a couple of degrees in the past few hours. Very consistent temperatures thanks to the cloud cover, that blanket on top of us, and all this humidity doesn't allow things to really uh, move all that much, and we're not going to move that much if at all throughout the rest of the morning mid 50s a couple of sprinkly showers out there low 60s at noon and then we will make it up to 70 later on today not quite up to where we should be that's mid 70s but warmer than yesterday and a peak or two of sunshine. I wouldn't count on a whole bunch of sunshine, just a little bit here and there. Humidity, which is obviously we've got relative humidity 100% right now. Dew points remain in the mid 50s, but then notice how this just continues to go up. So we're going to make it above that threshold of 60. So you'll really notice the humidity by later on this afternoon. And as this moisture continues to pump on in here, it's going to continue with some of these light little sprinkly showers off and on throughout the day today overnight tomorrow we'll do the same thing over again humidity remains very high we do get a break in the humidity though once we go into friday morning all right here's the satellite and radar picture and notice a couple of things again the showers are working their way pretty much up to the north but then notice how the clouds are coming in here from west to east so down here at the surface all this moisture with these little showers and then a lot of those clouds are coming in upstairs coming in from the west there's the next storm system off the the coast of California, which is going to be affecting us. That's the one that's going to be pulling the front through here Thursday into Friday. And this is what's also pumping the moisture in aloft in the atmosphere. We've got the low level coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, upper level coming in there from the uh, Pacific Ocean, and that remains the case. And as we continue with this southwesterly flow, that then warms things up. So warmer today than yesterday, warmer tomorrow still, and then on into Thursday. And Thursday, as this front moves on through here, which is a bit of this trough right there that comes on through. That's what is going to give us a chance for some strong to potentially severe storms. We do get a break in the humidity, but it's not going to be a big blast of cold air coming on in here, unlike what happened last week on that with that front that moved through and temperatures dropped down obviously over the weekend. So that'll be the situation going into the end of the week. We have the chance for some rain, which is good news, but then also the bad news, the chance for some severe weather. And then after that, Nice little stretch for a few days going in toward the weekend. 65 today at noon. Few sprinkly showers out there, one or two of them, and that's going to be the case later on this afternoon. 70, a couple of peaks of sunshine, but again, just a few little light sprinkly showers out there. We do the same thing tomorrow, although it will get warmer tomorrow, up to 80. It will get warmer on Thursday. Same start in the morning. Then with that front moving on through here, that's going to touch off potentially a couple of stronger uh, storms in the overnight hours. Early Friday morning we will clear on out lower humidity, really pleasant down to 50 Saturday morning and plenty of sunshine. Good looking uh, afternoon and evening on Friday. More clouds Sunday. Another small chance of rain Monday 
and another front first of next week. Very different from last weekend. Yeah, whole different story. We were comparing that 92 a couple of Saturdays ago, 50 Cold. Saturday, mm -hmm. and then nice. Yeah, nice this weekend. All right, we'll take it. Mother Nature's off her medication, 554, <laughs> 57 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the investigation on former President Trump as officials prepare for a possible arrest in the hush money payment case. Also, the latest on the banking crisis. Concern for one mid-sized bank this morning amid signs that things are stabilizing. Rebecca Jarvis and Becky Worley answering your questions. We're going to have those stories and so much more right here on GMA.